I am a worker for an organization that conducts deep sea research. I am specifically an oceanographer. Although for this organization I am not very helpful, I am still someone valuable for the expeditions. More than anything because of my job. To keep you up to date, we mainly take care of mapping. For that we have acoustic systems technology. Acoustic echo sounder that simultaneously collects bathymetric data and telepresence, satellite communication system. We began to explore little known regions of the Pacific Ocean because more than a month ago, some unusual phenomena, actually rare, had occurred. At the end of May, these sightings just began to occur. Until then at least, there have been more than 55 cases of stranded whales. The most worrying thing is that, Apparently, something has been driving them away, but why rush to this type of explanation? Knowing that it may be due to some noise pollution or something else, why do it? Well, there is a somewhat reasonable explanation, if you could call it that. Almost at the same time, apparently about three or four hours before, we were informed about sound waves coming from the depths of the Pacific Ocean. Just like the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in that distant 1997, it didn't really look like a geological phenomenon, which made us alarmed, but it was too good to be true. It was the first time. We shouldn't anticipate the facts. It would be the same as the bloop, because sooner or later, there would be a way to deny them. Only there was a very small difference between the two sounds, although the location agreed with the one mentioned above. The sounds were not exactly the same, while one, as its name says, a bloop was heard in the distance, the other seemed to be more serious. The force was greater, of course, the frequencies weren't that low, and to avoid confusion, no, it didn't make a bloop sound. The most remarkable and terrifying thing is that if you played with your mind, or if you tried to listen carefully, it seemed to be a growl, nothing like that seen before. But as I said, it was the first time. There is no rush of a conclusion yet. At the beginning of June, another 45 whales appeared stranded. Due to the circumstances, now it was something more worrying. If it was some contamination or a disoriented head, there would be no need to be so constant. In that case, there would be something else that made them behave that way. We were overwhelmed when we were informed of the same sound waves captured only four hours before the phenomenon of the whales. The difference was that the time passed from six to four minutes. To say that it was more of the same would be to lie to them. It was quite terrifying to think my theory was true. Yes, they were growls. The uncertainty was still there. Such a stranding phenomenon occurs when the whales get too close to the coast. Consequently, the sea current ends up dragging them towards the shore, and those hellish sounds coming from the depths of the ocean could be due to cryosism, or even a simple iceberg. And yes, we still had the hope that it was some natural phenomenon, but unusual. However, there were so many possibilities. We had to find an explanation, and fast. Guiding us by previously captured sounds, such as Julia, a sound captured by National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration on March 1, 1999, which, apparently, was a large iceberg that had run aground in Antarctica, or a similar one that was to slow down, which was an iceberg that had brushed against the Earth. But as I had said, it was nothing like what had been captured before, or so we thought until we compared some sounds which had a great relationship, a sound just as mysterious and unknown. The upsweep, sound detected by U.S. Equatorial Autonomous Hydrophone Arrays in August 1991. Although, it was not the same, it was the closest thing I had found to the sound that we had recently captured. If we added more sinuous sounds, with more gargles and also what seems to be muffled grunts, we would be talking about the same thing. After investigating several days, we realized something. It seems that in March, there were also about 30 whales. Last year, at least 49 whales suffered from them. And the largest phenomenon of stranding of these cetaceans was in 2017. More than 600 pilot whales appeared trapped and 250 appeared dead. According to what has been said, scientists could not explain the reason or any indication of what happened. 
but there were actually quite a few things that they kept hidden from the public. And recently, they reported to me about it. There were some curious and terrifying things about the subject. There was also a sound wave before the phenomena. The longest was the one from 2017, lasting about 12 minutes, and the others no less than 8. The only differences that the previous ones had that with which we had detected this year were the frequencies being lower than the current ones, but longer lasting. The second difference was the ones that remained of the detected sounds. They had different places it seemed. Whatever that thing was, it had kept in a not so constant movement. The only conclusion we reached was that it was not a natural phenomenon. Even more terrifying, those detected sounds were not something geological or something else. Apparently something inside those deep waters was alive. It seemed to be something out of the very same science fiction stories. A monster of enormous dimensions, capable of doing all kinds of things, waiting to be discovered, or in some other more crazy context, waiting to be awakened. But just as there was evidence of the existence of a sea monster, there was also some data that questioned it. What would such a large monster feed on? Why hadn't we seen it before? If such great beings had been seen even once throughout history, several unanswered questions, making us doubt once again whether what we were investigating was really a marine animal. Obviously there was a possibility, even the slightest, because the ocean is as vast as it is unknown. We have only explored 5% of all the oceans, began to believe that we truly know more about space than our own planet. Very interesting. Nope. Just one day before saying goodbye to June and starting to say hello to July, we received the latest report on sightings of stranded whales. To be exact, about 25 whales were found in the South Pacific Ocean, again in New Zealand. It was totally strange. This year, starting in May, as I said, we received the sound waves too close to where the well-known bloop had been heard, near Chile. The route did not have an exact pattern. From what we have been able to appreciate, after the sound emitted, the whales rise to the surface in an attempt at a possible escape. The idea was no longer as crazy as it was at first, because if it had been for something else, it would not have been in such large groups and in specific places. Why only in the Pacific Ocean? Again, doubts came and went. Returning to the topic, before the stranding of the 25 whales, as usual the same sound was present, but the duration was even longer than that of 2017. With a little more than 15 minutes, you would have seen the fear that gripped the scientists and others in charge of the case. A perfectly visible terror on their faces. Obviously I was not the exception. What we had recently detected was a very high frequency. It seemed to be much clearer than all the ones obtained before. Hearing it was too scary possibly closer than we thought possible. Almost as if a bucket of cold water had been thrown at me, I came back to reality. Everyone talking about what happened. They quickly told us to do an ocean mapping in the area. Often we needed to create our own maps, more than anything for a planning of an efficient and totally safe operation. Days passed. If it weren't for the fact that I still had little hope that it was due to some unusual phenomenon, I would have died of fear. We had collected thousands of data, lots of photos, done lots of simulations. Finally we found something that in hindsight, it would have been a great satisfaction to have never discovered it. Going through some of the more than a hundred photographs taken near the area, we noticed one in particular. We decided to zoom in on the image. Apparently, if our data did not lie, what we could see was an eye and a little of what seemed to be his body in the dense and so dark water. We realized the truth. The sound waves did not come from some geological, physical or even chemical phenomenon. We all realized it was an animal, apparently of an enormous size. By measuring the supposed captured eye, we could get about 10 to 12 meters. If only by measuring a small part of what could be such a thing, we got a damn 12 meters. What would its body be like if it were fully seen? We had only caught that. It was terrifying. The eye was repulsive, the pupil as black as possible, that it seemed to penetrate your soul, and the sclere so yellow, that even the same color would make a fool of itself. 
so bright, so striking and disgusting, at the same time. Just thinking that if that thing is alive and is part of the earth, yes, or yes it would have to reproduce, just thinking that there could be more of those things in the depths of the Pacific Ocean made me sick. To think that below us it houses a lot of undiscovered species, even of the most insane proportions, lurking in the dark, as if it were a shadow, it was undeniably terrifying. We were told that this would be confidential information, or at least it will be until we know and investigate the matter better. Surely many more species, including whales and even sharks, are going to flee in terror from these things, and to our regret, there will be no way to cover up the facts. It is more than obvious that there are already many speculations about it, because it was almost impossible for others not to have found out about the sound waves captured this year. Surely not the past ones, but the current yes. If I'm not mistaken, there is one that goes around the internet. Also the great stranding of huge animals. It was stupid to think that only we realized it. During the rest of July, we were informed that there were three reports of sounds in different parts of the ocean, each one with a difference of only two hours. Three of those sounds were heard consecutively in the same day. Yes, in case you are wondering, yes, there is more than one of those things. We believe that what we were detecting all this time was a hungry mom, and apparently, now her kids are hungry too. I could possibly get fired or worse, silenced for saying such confidential things which I don't think is possible because sooner or later, either someone else was going to write this, or people would just find out. Well, also as if they haven't. Who knew? It never crossed my mind that this could happen. The marine fauna and everything we know would die if we do not do something about it. But being something unknown and apparently of biblical nature, and the little knowledge we have of such a monster, unfortunately our help would be null. We would just have to wait for these things to reproduce more to the point that they are dominant on Earth. Sometimes I read internet forums and watch one or another conspiracy video to console myself, wanting to be the one who does not know a single shred of truth about all this. So far I cannot think, not even imagine how their faces would look like, after knowing that their many theories of a sea monster of enormous size are completely true. Thank you to my superfans, Sweet Black Swan, Tacey, and Brooklyn. I really appreciate you guys supporting my channel, and I look forward to making more content for everyone.